No developer actually enjoys writing documentation. At least I certainly don't. But the reality is this is something that's part of the job and it's something that will make your project much more sustainable in the long run. We all know this. And seeing that a lot of our code is written in SQL, one of the best things you can do is create a SQL style guide and add it right to your project. By establishing all of these rules and guides, it saves a lot of unnecessary arguing amongst team members on you know what's the right way to do something. And it'll just make your life a lot easier long term with your team. So in today's video, I want to talk about three things you should think about including in your SQL style guide. So number one, most importantly, is just establishing naming conventions. And this is something for whatever reason ends up taking a lot of time to decide as a team, but it is a really important decision. It's something that is going to determine how everything is named, how you reference things. So deciding on what that's going to be is really important. And even more so, you need to be consistent going forward and make sure people are uh, adhering to those rules. So a few examples here would be uh, table names and table aliases. Are you going to go all plural or all singular names for your tables? Again, this might sound really simple, but it is really important and you just need to decide kind of in a similar vein. When you join tables together, are you joining, uh, you know, based on a single letter? Are you going to alias the joins as a single letter or qualify the full name? Personally, I like to fully qualify the name because it's more explicit. It makes it easier. But again, this is something for you to decide and just make clear in your guide. Another example is how are you going to and alias your column names, snake case versus camel case, things like this. Just again, make it explicit and tell people what it is. Uh, last thing here would be timestamp columns. You know, in, in the world of DBT, they often recommend ending all of your time or date columns with underscore at. So instead of create date, it would be created at. And you might be thinking again, like this is so simple. Why would we include something like this? But it saves a lot of unnecessary discussion and nitpicking on PRs to just decide what it is and make sure everybody follows it. The second one here is to clarify expected casing and indentation. This is something that I think we often find ourselves getting a little bit lazy on. And I've talked about this in other videos, but having good formatting can separate pretty below average code to code that looks really nice and is easy to work with and well maintained. So establishing this in your style guide is another really great thing that you can do. So again, some quick examples here. I know there's going to be a lot of uh, you know strong opinions on this, but the action words, uh, you know, select from where group by are these all uppercase or are these all lowercase? Are you just going to capitalize the first letter? What are you going to do? Just establish that and make sure it's consistent throughout indentations. Are you indenting just one indentation under the select are everything on the same row. If you have a case when, how are you indenting? Things like that. Think about it and make sure you include that. Another example is just overall query layout. You want your code to be easily accessible to anybody who uses it. And the best way I've seen to make this happen is to determine how you're going to structure it from the start and then make sure everybody follows it. So even have a specific example within this guide showing how you want it to be done. So maybe you have kind of like what DBT recommends and have import statements where it's that select all at the top, followed by, um, you know, custom business logic, followed by a final select, whatever it is for you, deciding on what it is and making it clear for other people to use. And this might be a little difficult to explain through text. So maybe use, uh, you know, something like loom or a recorded video to walk through and explain what this looks like. Generally speaking, I think examples for this particular point are going to be really helpful for getting that point across and making sure it's exactly what you want it to be. The third one here would be establishing certain preferred approaches for different scenarios. So I know as developers, we like to have creative freedom and explore different ways to solve a problem. And I think that's totally acceptable. But generally speaking, you do want to have consistency at the same time. So as an example here, case whens versus an if condition, when do you want to use that? In that scenario, maybe you say if it's just uh, an either or condition, you use the if statement. If it's multiple conditions, then use a case. You know what's preferred. The whole goal here is to just avoid unnecessary debate uh, over and over again. Even if there is uh, a difference in opinion, just decide once as a team and move forward and you can always revisit it later. Another common example would be Boolean values. Are you going to do it as a true false? Are you going to do it as zero or one? Yes, no. Just pick one. And the final one here, which I know, again, everyone likes to uh, kind of have their own opinion about is where do you want to put the commas on the co on the column list? Is it going to be trailing commas? Are you going to have commas after the column name? How do you want to write this and just make it consistent? You don't want to jump into different queries that have different views and different approaches. It's just confusing and just looks like it's not 
a well-organized project when it's all over the place. So while creating a style guide like this isn't gonna be the most exciting part of the project, it's definitely gonna be helpful for you and your team. And I highly recommend taking some time to think through this and create one. I typically like to put it directly as a file in my Git project and refer to it directly in the readme so that it's the first thing people see when they work with the project and it's easily acceptable. So I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what other things you like to include in yours and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.